Hello, investors. It's Don Vandenborg, Senior Portfolio Manager with Revere Asset Management. Today is Monday, July 24th, 534 p.m. Eastern Time, coming to you from St. Augustine Beach, Florida, with tonight's Revere Market Insight video. State of the market, we continue to be in an uptrend. You can see over here on the trend gauge, we've got all three time frames that we track the leading indexes against. That's the short-term 21-day moving average, medium-term 50-day moving average, 200-day long-term moving average, all flashing bullish slash uptrend. We've removed the caution on the NASDAQ 100 as it continues to regress to the mean back to its uh, toward its moving averages. Now, just barely over 5% away from the 50-day moving average and about a percent away from the 21-day moving average. Market leaders acting fine also. So we've got four arrows there as far as what happened today. Another tight range day, this time an up day. NASDAQ 100 continuing to lag. Rebalance was finished Friday after the close. Uh, just got the new uh, levels, the new... Um, percentages of the big uh, the big cap seven and uh, we'll see how that works going forward biggest change was avgo actually now is weighted in the top seven but if you count g-o-o-g l and g-o-o-g if you combine them that's a top five so kind of an asterisk there as far as uh, the size goes so what happened today rg8 uh lagged on the day uh not really a bad day for growth stocks i'd say uh they finished better than they started let's say that but the rg8 still down a third of a percent s p 500 closed up four tenths nasdaq 100 up 0 0.16 dow up a half percent mid caps up 0.1 russell 2000 small caps up 0.3 global diversified 60 40 stock and bond up 0.18%, bonds lagged on the day, rates up slightly, tight range trading on bonds today. In-house protection up 0.52%. We'll take a look at the tail of the tape and charts of interest. Let's dive right into it. We're gonna start with the S&P 500. And really what we're looking at now is a consolidation, we'll call it a, a three-day consolidation. So. Uh, there was the most recent breakout, which would have been last Tuesday, another up day on Wednesday, pull back on Thursday, inside day on Friday. Tried to poke out higher, but closed back inside the range uh, from Friday. And as I said, tight range day also. So uh, this is really arguably a five day consolidation, but the last three uh, after two up is what we're looking at. So you go up and then you pull back. And as long as you don't break below a recent low, uh, the uptrend is still uh, intact. Let's go to the NASDAQ 100. And notice three days below the declining eight EMA, big difference from uh, the S&P 500. And this is another reason uh, I keep saying it, why we, uh, really believe in uh, an allocation in the S&P 500. We use the SSO to get uh, twice the bang for our buck, but all the, all the rotation that has taken place, there's no way we could have predicted what sectors it would go in. We knew we were gonna get a pullback in the NASDAQ 100. We didn't know exactly when. It happens fast, it happens furious. You can see the lack of relative strength uh, over the last four sessions in the NASDAQ 100. You can see the relative strength line making slightly lower lows ahead of price. Let's talk about what I mean by that. So here's the breakout, that 372. So let's reference where we were on the relative strength line since then. And you can see uh, relative strength making a lower low while the price hasn't broken back into this base. So the, the breakout still intact, but on a relative basis, uh, it's not. This was a pretty strong move up. That's the that's the explanation as to why uh, price hasn't pulled back. But it was a strong move up uh, and a stronger move down on a relative basis over the last four days. When when compared to the benchmark S&P 500, let's go to 
the index that lagged for quite a while, but is seeing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven straight up days on the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Very impressive. Uh, you can see relative strength reasserting itself, getting back above this 21-day exponential moving average of the relative strength line and holding this breakout above the 34,600 level. So we go from looking for a pullback in the NASDAQ 100 to looking for a pullback in the Dow Jones Industrial Average, this breakout right here. Before the relative strength really started to kick in, uh, would have been a great place to put on, in our case, uh, UDAO, which is the uh, triple Dow Jones. We would have uh, actually, uh, Connor mentioned possibly putting that on, but we passed at the time. Nice trade, 11 straight up days, as I said. Let's go to mid caps, MDY. Trying to break above, putting in another handle here. This looks really good. This looks like a bull flag on mid caps that wants to break higher, breaking above this left side of this uh, cup base. Arguably, it's already a breakout here with the cup and handle that's showing, but uh, we want to get above this 500 level to say, hey, we made all time year to date highs which uh, small caps and mid caps have not done yet. Mid caps here, small caps. You can see 199.26 over here again, what looks like a bull flag being put in place here. And if banks and oils continue to act well, I'm, I'm going to expect this, the mid caps and small caps to uh, break out of that range today as when they do well, normally mid caps and small caps uh, outperform. So there's the five major indexes. Let's look quickly at the VIX. We just kind of had a grind higher today, poked our head back above the 21 EMA, back below it, consolidating in the VIX just the, in a very similar way that we're consolidating on the indexes. Let's go to the dollar. Dollar having another strong day here, fifth straight up day back above the 21 day moving average back into this uh, level where it broke down from. So now we want to see if this equivalent of the 2809 acts as resistance since it was the bottom of the range that it broke uh, broke free from. And you know, if the dollar is doing strongly, that usually me means that precious metals and precious metal stocks are not doing so well. Here's the SLB, SLV, sorry, silver pulling back for the third straight day, down 1.1% today. VLD pulling back for the third straight day, still holding this uh, 21, this 50 day moving average and the 21 day moving average, which is trying to come up through it. This would be a good spot for a bounce higher on GLD. Also a great spot for a bounce higher on GDX. We really need to hold the lows of uh, today and last Friday, which are within a couple of pennies of each other. Uh, so you can see the pullback on uh, the gold stocks also. Let's flip over to bonds. Bonds traded in a tight range again today. Uh, if the range was tight on the prices, tight but down, meaning yields were tight but higher. There's BND, here's TLT down also. Let's go to the 30-year yield, slightly up as expected, and the 10-year TNX uh, up a half of a percent. Bitcoin suffering looked like a looked like a, a great move off of this consolidation last week. And you know, sometimes what's so obvious in the market just doesn't pay off because we've had really a breakdown now of Bitcoin back below uh, this 50 day moving average. Now, is this going to be uh, a shakeout and we're going to continue back up higher? Uh, if you Bitcoin actually looks worse than Bitcoin related stocks, let's take a look at Mara. This is a nice bounce off the 21 day moving average. Let's look at Riot. Not even hasn't even pulled back to the 21 day moving average. Those are really the two miners uh, that jump out. How about an ETF that invests in the miners? WMGI bounced off the 21 day today. So uh, this could be an opportunity if Bitcoin uh, regains the range that it broke down from. Let's look at the equal weights very quickly. Kind of in sync today, up 0.28%, making a higher high on the equal weighted S&P 500 QQEW. Uh, tight range down actually versus the NASDAQ 100. Let's take a look now at the tail of the tape. You can pause this. I didn't fill out the VIX here. What did the VIX do? Up 
and um, let's hit the news very quickly. So uh, the next three days are going to be pretty busy. So after the close on Tuesday, we've got Microsoft and Google, two of the big components uh, in the NASDAQ 100. Then Wednesday, 2 p.m. Eastern time, we've got the FOMC decision. It's basically a lock that is going to be a 25 basis point raise. And then after the market closes on Wednesday, we've got meta earnings. That's a, another, obviously, of the big seven. And then Thursday morning, we've got inflation data that the Fed watches very closely, the PCE data. So uh, lots going on this week. Uh, day three of the consolidation after making a high. Tenth day above the ADMA for the S&P. 40th day above the 21-day exponential moving average for the S&P. As I said, we've pulled back reasonably now, for just 5.1% on the NASDAQ as it continues to have a mild underperformance. Uh, sectors good today, oils, KRE, also KBE, the banks, KWEB, uh, PIC, this is base metal miners and emerging markets. And the downside, Bitcoin, did software come back? Nope, still down a third percent by the end of the day. XLU and XLV, utilities and healthcare with a pullback also. Uh, biotech and gold, silver and gold and silver stocks. The only change we made in-house was to add to NRGU as uh, oil stocks are acting pretty well. Um, don't, now we're not, obviously we're looking at the price uh, relative to this, but the 10, uh, underlying stocks are looking uh, better relative to their charts than the NRGU is because this is a, a three times ETF. So when it goes down, it's going to underperform more to the downside. But when it goes up, quite obviously, it underperforms more to the upside. So we base our decision on this based on the 10 individual names that make up this index, not on uh, the index itself. But um, Oil stocks with a good day today. Uh, oil continues to trend higher. So that increased our exposure slightly to 1.82%. So that's volatility adjusted exposure in the bottom line for the day. Another tight range day, NASDAQ 100, the QQQ lagging after Friday's rebalance. Let's get to some individual names here. And the best performance of the day for the portfolio and as far as the big stocks go, was Tesla. Tesla says, don't call it a comeback. I never left. So here's Tesla with the breakdown. Here's Tesla with uh, trying to rally on Friday, but failing. Here's Tesla gapping down and you think the worst, but no. That undercut has put in the low for now. Good level to trade against, 255. And we made it all the way up to 270. 270 is a resistance area now, though, because this is where we broke down intraday from. And if you look over here, this 270 level was critical on the 12th and the 13th. So let's go back to the daily chart. Uh, there's the 12th and the 13th action. OK, uh, and the, we did close back above the 21 day moving average. Remember, the 21 EMA acted as resistance when we tried to get back above it on Friday back to the 15 minute chart. We paused there for a second when we tried to get back above it, but then we did and then pulled back and held it on the pullback and it didn't break. So you wanna watch that level, the 268-ish area, very close, and then certainly the 255. So if this continues to look like it's put in a post earnings bottom, and this is an outside up positive reversal versus Friday's high and low, uh, Tesla, if that's all the only as low as it's going to go, that's fine with me. And uh, we're ready to add back some of which we sold for that. Definitely a positive day for Tesla today. What else had a good day? How about ON? ON? Uh, trying to break above this level hasn't this uh, 35 and change level hasn't made it yet, but a nice uh, bounce right off the ADMA. Holding the breakout is uh, the key. So consolidating within this pivot plus 5% level is ON. ON. What else had a decent day today? Uh, let's see. Let's go with uh, not a lot of big up moves, but uh, several opportunities uh, brewing on bounces. One that's not working well after its earnings uh, moved down last week was Intuitive Surgical, continuing with a day two layer low, uh, lower low. 
hanging right here on the 50-day moving average, again, above average volume. This is this uh, volume that you see here is not a positive for Intuitive Surgical. And uh, it made a nice 13-week run off of the gap up after its last earnings report hit the pivot plus 20 to 25% area. Earnings came and that's it. Looks like it needs a base now uh, to clear things out. That's going to wrap it for today. Remember, it's not how, mate, how much you make in the market. It's how much you can keep. What we attempt to do here at Revere, our goal is when we, uh, we take when the market is giving, but we don't want to give back when the market wants to take it back. So that's our downside protection. That's our goal here at Revere. Uh, and um, one thing I want to note before I close, in fact, this is uh, something that I noticed today and I'm noticing it more and more. Remember, uh, William O'Neill was a big proponent of using weekly charts. You see here that Tesla looks like it didn't really even come close to its 50 day moving average on the pullback. Now, I've mentioned this a couple times in the past before, but having uh, having weekly and daily charts right next to each other on my big screen today has given, uh, and not just today, it's something that I always do now, has given me a new perspective. O'Neill using his weekly charts, he would talk about a pullback to the 10 week. You would think with the 10 week that it's always as close to the 50 day as possible, but that's really not the case when something is in an uptrend. When you're in an uptrend and you're closing at the top of your range, the, the 10 week moving average is only using those last 10 numbers uh, to generate its value. So we came within $2 today, $2.60 of the 10 week moving average on the weekly chart, while on the daily chart, uh, the low of the day was 254, uh, 237, so 15, 16, 17 dollars away on the daily chart. Huge difference. So, uh, if you, somebody told you that uh, we got a pullback to the 10 week and they immediately think the 50 day, uh, we didn't get it on the daily, but certainly close enough within two dollars. That's less than a percent, uh, two dollars and 60 cents, less than two dollars or less than a percent from uh, the 10 week moving average. That's assuming today's low holds. Uh, but if you go back and look at weekly charts and uh, the guys on IBD Live that are experts in this talk about it all the time, how often the 10-week moving average completely contains the big run for a stock. And if this was the pullback, we're very happy uh, to rejoin the Tesla train uh, if it's going to go higher. So uh, we certainly want today's low to hold, but right below that is the 10-week moving average. And then you go all the way down to 237. Tomorrow, it'll be up about two bucks, probably closer to 230, high 238s or 239. Uh, but working its way up there, we'd like to see Tesla go a little bit sideways. Love the story, love the future, love the execution. Um, I mean, this is a company that doesn't even have all their products to the production market yet. So uh, we definitely are big fans of the story, but we're not going to uh, let it drop. Like it did drop 65% last year from uh, peak to trough. Uh, that's just not how we do things, no matter how much we like the story. But um, so take that uh, to the bank on Tesla today. So, and again, remember not how much you make in the market, it's how much of that you can keep. That's why we have our stops in place at all the time. And with that, I'm gonna wrap up the Daily Market Insight video for Monday, July 24th. This is Don Vandenborder with Revere Asset telling it like it is. Thanks for listening and have a great day.